Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our League of Ireland weekly review show. And uh, we're just going to touch over all the games from the last week and a bit about um, the Europa League, obviously, with Cork then as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll just kick it Fixtures off. Fixtures are still a bit all over the place, aren't they? Yeah, well, I think we, Europe didn't really help things, to be honest. Um, but uh, we, I suppose we'll, we'll start off with you know the second leg. Um, Cork were always going to be uh, fighting an uphill battle, in my opinion. They were, but not to score over either tie is very, very disappointing. And you know we we spoke Although about. They did hit the bar twice, wasn't it? I think well, it was sadly, sadly at the post, the post and as well. The free kick. Chef hit the. Uh, yeah. Um, frustration is the biggest thing I can I can talk about. I did honestly think that, you know, they at the start of the year they thought they might have pushed on a bit in Europe. I thought they kind of the, the way the squad was kind of developing, they're going to lean towards. But unfortunately, when you strip it back down, and this is not being disrespectful, they struggled to go the to score goals and they conceded very bad goals. I think they were four nil, as in four goals zero, and against nine. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's not pretty. No matter what way you try and gloss it up, um, and the manner of the goals, even the first goal of the night is just so so frustrating. Like because. You know, for periods in the game, they did quite well. And, you know, you thought maybe they might get one goal and, you know, you might put a bit of excitement in the tie, really. But it was just utter, utter disappointment. Is it the only way you can describe the, the yeah. tie? Yeah, really? when you look at the performance, you know, uh, like, most the majority of the team that played, I, I believe, played against Home Farm on Sunday in the Cup. Yeah, that seemed a bit mental to me. And uh, surely it was the, like, surely the Cup isn't a priority now. Well, is it? I don't think you, it. I don't think you, it. I, you, I don't think know. it is. I, surely you'd give a stab at Europe and to try and you know, to try and just like pull, even just stamp the you know a little bit of authority on you. Maybe Europe. he felt that the uh, you know the game was dead and buried. Maybe per, you perhaps, never know. Perhaps, perhaps, but I think you got to go in a, in a game like that where you at least give it a go and you know try and try and make it even exciting to a certain extent and try and really push at it. Yeah, it's just I know I keep repeating it, but I'm just so so disappointed. I thought they might have, you know, I thought they might have gone on a decent run. I thought they would at least put up a better performance. Did you did you see um any of Brian Kerr was talking about? Yeah, like the, I agreed with a lot of it. Uh, you'd have to, but there is, you know, there's a lot not right with the league at the moment from top to bottom. I mean, people are talking about reform. To the people are talking, but the biggest thing for me is the, is the is the lack of funding really, and that's all the way down to television money. Um, like you look at the like even like it, it didn't really come into play here. But if if Cork say or Dundalk had gone in a big European run, they would have gone so far ahead on the rest of the rest of the league. It would have would have been crazy. <coughs> There's such a distortion um um difference in the funding that you get for like performances in the league versus European performances, and it's just it's a mess. There's yeah. no there's no other way of of saying it really. Um from top to bottom and it's it's like i always go back look you 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 as a shells fan but you always go back to that night with deportivo like a runny almost that's what strikes into my head the whole time is that you see hulan you know running running the show against a, a team that i think had gone to the semi-finals or something they've done quite well yeah, yeah. The yeah. Semi -finals. That, that, that's right the season previously i know they had a, a bit of a, a fell off the cliff afterwards but that's the level of performance that we kind of got used to we're so far away from that at the moment is ridiculous yeah, and well obviously Dundalk had their run then as well. Uh, and uh, they done quite well and they were playing against the likes of Zenit and so on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people thought that they could bring back, you know, the glory days as well. And then they didn't do too well either, losing 4-0. No. So it was it was a culmination. It wasn't just Cork. It wasn't just no, 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 no. The whole, the whole lot yeah. of, of the teams just seemed outclassed by, you know, the, the teams they came up against. Yeah, uh, and it's... It's very hard to take because you want you want Irish teams to do so well. You want to raise the profile of the league. You want to get people, your mates in England or whatever, you know, talking about these Irish teams. There was even like Rovers to be fair, but back a couple of years ago, uh, playing Tottenham and stuff like that. All of a sudden, your mates, you know, asking you about them, asking about the yeah. league, and just creating that bit of interest, that bit of excitement in the league. But wasn't to be, sadly. Yeah. Well, uh, in the league, they weren't doing much better either. Yeah, mixed mixed results. Uh, we, we, we I suppose we get back to them because uh, they they played Sunday and then obviously played uh, Dundalk then played last night. So um, I don't know. Maybe we start with the the Dublin derby if you like. Yeah, oh, it's hard to kind of summarize this game without speaking of 
about the manager situation at Rovers because it was such such a vocal outburst from the home supporters after losing a game. They've had a horrendous run of uh, run of results against Bose. Um, it was the it was almost stoked a little bit more in terms of fire in terms of Watts playing. Yeah, a little, if if ever a derby didn't need an extra bit of spite or a bit of uh, extra niche for somebody to to get wor- worked up about, every time you touch the ball, it was like <laughs> some of the abuse was horrendous, really. Yeah. Um, but look, he came out before and said, "Look, sometimes yeah. players have to be selfish," and I and I, I thought I he was to, right in, in that sense. I have to agree with him. Yeah, in that sense. But going back to the game, like it's a it's a bad bad set of results now. Um, for Rovers, it's it's just. Like whatever about losing the game, and you know, kind of performing well, and the fans going away, kind of going, okay, you know, we didn't win, but you know, there's something to cling on to, a bit of positivity here. It's just very dark, doom, negativity, everything, and that outburst at the end was, it's it's hard really to. Yeah, but the thing about the game was, you know, it wasn't, you know, obviously I was at it, and you know, there wasn't too many chances or anything like that. It was a, a lot of time it was just back end to end, but it wasn't really... It was a frantic derby almost, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was, you know, it, it seemed like whoever was going to score the first was going to win, and that was ultimately it. I mean, Bowles got quite lucky in the sense of their goal, and they took it very well. Owen Stokes, not Graham Stokes, uh, <laughs> took the goal very well. Autocorrect was a killer the yeah. best time, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, no, no, Owen took it very well, and I think... No, it wasn't that game that we were at. It was, it was a game we were speaking to Owen and they told me he should have scored. And he, he wasn't best pleased about it, but uh, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to catch up with him after the game. So, uh, Owen, if you're watching, uh, well no, done. I'm sure he enjoyed that moment as well. Yeah, but like uh, that's what I'm saying. Stephen Bradley came out after the game and said, you know, if it was nil-nil, it wouldn't have been a bad result. And by one little moment in the, go- in the game, um, that's that's ultimately what changed. But these are the fi- fine margins that you know defines a good team. And yeah, he's not helped either by the the run of, the run of victories that both had over overs now, and you know, yeah. and then you know it it leads on to the celebrations like the, the everybody thinks has, has heard and seen the you got you got to I think it's class in a way as much as it you you say you might say it's unsporting or whatever, but you're picking up the corner flag and waving it. I, th- I think with the jersey, I'd be I'd be lying if I said I didn't think that's absolutely theirs. I know most wine Rovers fans up to the absolute last, but. You know, you gotta have emotion in in football. You gotta enjoy moments like that. Like it's a. Huge... I'm sure if the shoe was on the other foot, they'd be loving it and lapping yeah. it up too. But I can see. Obviously, I can see why they're. So well, maybe one of their players next season will do that. Yeah, well, they'll have to win the game for us, won't they? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. But I thought, to be fair, Dan Carr was very good up front. You did. Yeah. Um, there were some moments where he was absolutely amazing, but in 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 terms of both, you know, the uh, back four, they were brilliant. They were they were very solid and yeah. they didn't really leave uh, much for Subble to do, and and then there was a great tackle I think by Daryl Leahy on Brandon Kavanagh towards the end where he, it's a sliding tackle and if he misses that it's a, it's it was a certain goal by Kavanagh yeah. again another follower of the show, but um, <laughs> you look at it and you're like, I remember looking yeah, at it and everyone was like thought it was a penalty, stay on your feet, but stay uh, no he yeah. managed to trap the ball and wrap it right around it and he just cleared it out and that, and that for me was like that's when you knew the game was won. And uh, it's sad because now Rovers, you know, um, which we'll probably move on now to uh, Waterford and Derry, but obviously the Waterford game, um, they beat they beat Derry, and now they they are on course for for Europe. And yeah. it, it seemed like there was a point where Rovers were almost catching up to. Uh, yeah, because like Waterford had that great start to the season, then it kind of dropped a little. Uh, oh, they had a disciplinary. Uh, yeah, and they had lack, for of, uh, lack of players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, well, then you look like it looked like Rovers when they had gone had a, a complete contrast. Kind of wobbly start, then steadied off just around the time that kind of Waterford were kind of dropping. They were going up. He thought maybe Waterford or you know, it looked like Rovers are back in contention for that European spot. They've kind of dropped a bit, and Waterford have picked up the form and been pretty decent lately. Another huge result, and they're very much. I think, I think I don't think it's an overstatement to say that, you know the European spot is is there is is theirs now to lose really. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely to yeah. lose. Yeah, I don't think they've definitely got it. There's a good number of games left, but um. Obviously, they're in pole position for it. Absolutely. And, you know, I'd like to see them do it. I, I, as I, I've, I've been very vocal many times this season, and I like their fans. Uh, I think the, the likes of APH and stuff like that do a great job in promoting, you know, promoting Waterford and trying to promote the league. I even watched their uh, their YouTube channel, their, their highlights against Derry, because the full highlights weren't up on um, on Soccer Republic. So Shane, 
Shane from the Waterford Blue Supporters. I don't want to give his, his, his name <laughs> out, but uh, he knows who he is. So he put it in there, and uh, he does tremendous work at organising buses and stuff to get to and from games as well. So I think that they're doing fantastic work. And then, obviously, Peter, who's a friend of the show, does, records their highlights too. Um, so, I mean, kudos to them. And, you know, they've been a breath of fresh air, uh, fresh air coming up from the first division and then doing so well but yeah. we kind of knew from the start of the season that they were going to do well with the signs they made very true they, they were very smart in the transfer market um, as you said there's so many good people doing so much good work around the club I would be I think they deserve a European spot um, they need to, they deserve you know having some big nights down, down there as well and really really hope that they they kind of latch on and, and secure this European foot. I think it would be good for the league as well just to spread out a bit more. Yeah, but um, I don't I don't think, sorry to put it off, but I don't think that, if you look around our squad, you know, you've got Gavin Hulhan, you've got Noel Hunt, Courtney Dufus, then you got Akinadi, then you have uh, Heary, Paul Keegan, David Webster, you know, and the, the names go on. So they've got a very good core of players there, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, they got a bit of luck against Derry with the, with the deflected goal and then in the last minute, uh, Ali Roy, um, hitting the hitting the crossbar for Derry. Um, well, I just think now after that after that result now Derry are are you know destined for a mid table finish. Yeah, they're stuck in the in the dollars in the middle of the table now. There's no moving them either, either up or down now. But that's that's really it, I think. Yeah, um, I, I haven't really got much much to say about them. Like, no, like probably been you know suffered like a lot of teams with 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 exit of players and transfers and yeah. whatnot but um, but it's annoying as well because there's never that there's no coverage of these games that we can never really go into depth about the things to even see how they played or anything like that you can see bits and pieces yeah, and I said only... that the extended highlights on yeah. Waterford's YouTube yeah. channel where it would show they had chances but it's, it's hard to judge ultimately when you can't watch these you know these games but as I say it's a massive uh, result for Waterford and a massive step in the right direction for sure for sure and you know I just hope that they push on now you know getting all hunt back involved uh, etc i just hope that they push on now and get the european spot that i think they deserve yeah and you may, you may see no hunt on a screen near you soon is that oh so, so sligo got themselves back on track um i'd almost say a must win game against limerick um it would have been absolute curtains if they if they were getting sucked back down to to that bottom pile that's been so hit and miss with sligo it's been probably more bad than good and a lot of yeah, well, I was speaking with uh, with Patrick McLean um, okay. the week previously, and they've got a bad result, and um, it he was he said that the camp were down, they were desperate to get a to get a win, uh, just to raise the spirits again. So um, I think it was a huge result for them personally because the week before they were talking about handing back their wages and everything else. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I think Lee J Lynch was was the instigator behind that, um, and yeah, so they were they were talking about handed back their wages and the, the camp just seemed very low and uh, so I think that was a massive result for them I think you know Limerick at this stage I think they've accepted that they're going down or well, play off well us, yeah. you know what I mean well, if they don't win that then they're gone but they need they need a big change next season they need to, the, the next when the season's over whatever happens they just need to make sure that they get an overhaul and sort things out because quite clearly they're not good enough yeah, they're, it's, a, it's a very young squad. There's, there isn't a lot of experience in that team. It's just either. like Bray. Yeah, it's just... That's almost a recipe for disaster, really, isn't it? They, yeah. they just need... Um, you know, it's weird. Like the, the focus of their season now has to be really on that playoff game. Cause it's going to come down. That, that I can't see a way why how they don't get in the playoff. And how big a game is that going to be for them? Yeah, and yeah, then, you're, then you're looking at uh, Cretaro... Obviously, getting the goal of the game was absolute peach. And then last night against Dundalk, he actually uh, he's the most uh, appearance for the club now. Yeah. On so the back of his testimony as well. So it's been a nice old time for him of late. Very true, yeah. Says his life in the old dog, yeah, yes. so he said. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, speaking of that game against Dundalk, then as well, we'll keep on going with Sligo. Um, there's a certain striker up front there that we may have mentioned. He might have scored again. Oh, he's 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 an animal. Even his goal the other night against Bray, um, the way he hung himself in the air and to guide it back into the, into the corner. Uh, I would say a massive well done to Enda Minogue who plays for Bray and he, he follows the show quite quite a lot. And uh, if you watch the soccer public, literally when they come in, the the first thing he does in the in the shot is make a save from Huber and it's a great save. 
and uh, he he done very well from what I believe. So uh, hopefully it's the start of a, of a great career for himself. And um, you know, in fairness to him, he's coming up against the best team in the league mm-hmm. at this present time. Um, it's funny because the other week we were only saying are they on the verge of meltdown. They could clearly uh, squashed those rumors, and uh, they seem to be back flying. I think now, you know, they'll be solely focused on you know winning the league. And even I've spoken to Pat himself, and all he cares about, he doesn't care about finish top score, he doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to make sure he wins the leagues. What good is it him finish top score, then not win the league? That's basically his mentality. Yeah, that just shows the character of the man. Yeah, because you look at a famous English player who uh, has very much a different attitude, Mr. Kane. It's uh, golden boot, golden boot. I don't really care about anything else. So it's refreshing to see a player in such good form, being so focused on the team with the end goal and. You know, that's two big wins in a couple of days there from Dundalk as well. As we said, we kind of brushed over and maybe even mentioned the, the C were there with them um, a week or two ago. Um, back on track now, particularly with Cork dropping points as well. So, you know, I kind of said Waterford's European spot uh, is theirs to lose. I'm nearly leaning towards that the league is Dundalk's to lose now. No, it would be now yeah. in my opinion yeah. as well. Um, Cork fans may not like that, but it's the truth. Yeah, well, look, speaking on Cork there, um, that's bad resulting in Pats. I know there's a little bit of call. It's going to be a little bit of a hangover, etc. after, you know, Europe and the exit. And particularly the way they exited Europe um, in very disappointing form. But a 1-1 one, one draw with Pats, no disrespect to Pats, just isn't good enough. Yeah, especially for a team that are supposed to be fighting for the league. Yeah. They may ultimately may be tired because of European adventures and stuff like that, and going to Norway and stuff like that. But... Ultimately, it comes down to your results in the league domestically, and you know Pat's would be delighted with that. And they were result. full full value as well. You know, I spoke to well a friend of the show as well and work. You, um, they were full value for. He was down at the game and they were full value for that. And probably maybe he said they were probably a little bit past buys, but he said you know they probably could have got a second or third goal there at stages than before the late round. Even Tony, I don't know who said that yeah. on Soccer Republic, yeah. but I must say I'm delighted for Dean Clark. Uh, to get on the guy, I did tell him he's been overdue a goal for yeah. quite some time, and he said he's overdue about ten. So it must have felt like about ten men in there for him. So delighted. So yeah, and then you know Cork with a great goal. I think it was Garol Marisi caught by a couple of players. They whipped the ball, yeah. and then uh, he whips in. Was it was a him or BG whipped in the ball. Someone whipped in the ball and he went from the right. And uh, oh no, it was it was Marcy. Whipped in the ball and uh, Josh O'Hannon stayed two head home. Free header and smashed at home. It was uh, kind of reminded me of the goal he scored against Dundalk a couple of weeks ago on the TV. Uh, kind of reminded me of that. It was a great finish. Yeah, no, he, he tucked it away lovely. And then after that, it seemed that, you know, Cork, obviously, there's the, the, the goal and it's the kind of that bit of confidence they give you. And the, by all accounts, they, they really ripped into it right at the end and went on a late rally. And I know the Pats fans were, were delighted that the full-time whistle came in the end. But, yes, they've rescued a point. But that's still a bad, bad, bad result. Particularly the way um, the dog hoovered up six points in a short space of time as well. And it's, they're going to have to, you know, get things turned around very, very quickly and hope that that crisis that we mentioned and flirted about about Dundalk earlier kind of kicks into play from a Cork point of view. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's looking like it could be a relying on the Cups. Yeah, but the thing about I think the the total contrast is one thing to the other with Dundalk scoring goals, Cork and scoring goals. No. Dundalk are scoring goals from all directions. You've got Benson scoring goals from midfield, you've got Dylan Connolly scored obviously again. Uh you've got um Michael Duffy, if he's not scoring, he's assisting. <laughs> He'd be another one who would be in contention for a call up as well. A lot of people are calling for him to be called up for the Northern Ireland team, mm-hmm. call him up. So I know he's been in a few squads with Michael O'Neill. So it'll be interesting to see if he's even mentioned in the in the in the squad on Monday. Um then you have uh obviously Huben banging them in the front, then you've got Ronan Murray, another Galwegian. There we go, uh, Galway are taking over. Yeah, uh, Huben and him, and they're good mates. So then you got the two of them. There's uh, well if Murray hasn't hit, hit the ground running because Huben's done so well, but he's still there and you know he's a threat. So they've got goals from everywhere. And uh, they don't really seem to be suffering with, it, with the loss of uh, Adorjan as well, which I thought they might have. Yeah, he was that magic player that maybe unlocked the defensive. was very, very cagey. But, you know, you've, like, you've rambled for a couple of minutes there with the various attacking options that they have and players that are all scoring and that look like a threat to score. And, you know, you match that with being pretty watertight at the back as well. And, you know, 
<laughs> it's not a bad combination, is it? Yeah. So and and they are they just done really good business in uh in the recent transfer window and it's every season that they seem to have to rebuild and they come back and do very well, you know. Yeah, and it's yeah, look, it's their title to lose now. It really is. Um it's been it was neck and neck to on the season now, they're probably ahead by a, a short distance. Yeah, I'd say Mary who Mary was given a stick last time about uh <laughs> should be singing our praises this time. <laughs> yeah, well we we try and be neutral, we say it as it is. We do, but yeah. sometimes people just can't uh, accept that, and uh, yeah, sadly, that's it, just the way it is. We ha- we ha- we have to call <laughs> it as we see it. So to be fair as well, like uh, you know, people are you know they've such a strong affiliation to their own team that the blinkers are going to be on. We're all that way inclined ourselves, um. But yeah, no, here fully fully neutral and partial, say it as it is, etc. etc. And yeah, they're very much in the driving seat now. Yeah, um, is that all in terms of our show? Yeah, that's the games run through. Um, um, there was a couple of people wanted us to touch over this uh, third tier yes. of uh, League of Ireland. Now, I don't know too much about it, so I'm not going to go on about it for a whole lot uh, at all, really. Basically, it's a third tier to connect the gap between uh, underage football and senior football. Yeah. Personally... I need more details than that. Yeah, we've got to see how it works. Like yeah, all the it's the ideas being floating around. I think it might have come from perhaps the FAI um Congress or not Congress, AGM or yeah. general meeting or whatever, blah blah blah. As one of these ideas thrown out. How it's gonna work, don't really know. Um, you know, it's not something, you know, people were mentioned online a good bit today, but I haven't seen a proper proposal. I can't really Yeah. Do it's just it's it. just literally that statement is yeah. they're thinking of doing turned here. Um division and yeah. it's going to connect that's that's all we know we don't know what teams are going to be in it yeah. we don't know anything like that yeah like there's all sorts of was reading up trying to read up on it today series of lack of information they're talking about senior clubs all being involved in this third division and then i think i saw another which to me without looking looking into it too much um having an under 23 league perhaps that would join the gap a little closer that age between underage football and trying to trying to go into first team football I don't know something definitely needs to be done because as you can see I think ultimately by the results in Europe that's the biggest indication of the strength of the league and the strength of the underage systems things aren't right yeah um, um, but with, with before I could comment or both of us could com- uh, comment fully on it we'd have to see the proposal properly what what exactly is planned what the teams are going to be in when it's going to run take place is it going to run parallel Etc. 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 One to keep an eye. We'll, we'll hopefully a bit more information will come out. We'll yeah. do a bit more detailed uh, piece on it in the future. Yeah. Um. I think that's been it. That was what majority of people were asking us just to touch over. Um. Just in terms of uh content coming up, there's a lot of stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks that you should really stay tuned for. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. And uh, if you want to be alerted, click the bell for alerts. Uh. What else? We're almost at uh, 3,000 subscribers, <laughs> so I think we are 340 away, so... Do it. Why not help us get there? Um, get your dog, your mother, your father, your, your auntie. Brother. Your auntie has balls, should be your uncle, ne- so ne- get her to Next door neighbour, anyone. Yeah. Set, set up a graffiti account if you have to, just give it a thumbs up, follow us on all the social media platforms. Huge and if you're, if you're a fan of uh, podcasts, we, we have our shows all in, on SoundCloud as well, so... Uh, stuck, they're all there for you to hear. Too. Yeah, stuck in work. Why not listen to us for motivation, get you through the, the long day in the office, etc. If you can put up with us. Yeah, why not? Well, as always, thanks for watching and we will see you guys soon. Um, have a nice Talk day. Talk to you soon.